We're starting the second uh, painting of our nighttime series. This is a series where we're going to a few different locations around Boston at nighttime, starting around 6 p.m., having something to eat, <clears throat> then doing a painting as night settles in. And we've chosen a very spectacular view today on Rose Wharf, which is down near South Boston, in front of the Moakley Courthouse. Beautiful scene. Here's a, a sketch that I did uh, to precede the painting and was pleased with the way that the um, lights started to present themselves in the sky and on the water. So that's going to be a focus of mine in, in this painting. And um, uh, the, the night was sort of slowly moving in, so I'm not going to use that pitch black sky, but more of a, an open sky. Anyway, I would like to catch the uh, the effect of the lights that were dancing on the water as well as the light that was streaming out of the main archway in Rose Wharf. So I'm placing some lights before I get started. I'm using um, a rough paper to help me and a lot of uh, dry brush in creating the, the, the dark tones and uh, initially to state some of these light tones. And what I'd like to do is <clears throat> um, state the, the building sort of as a, as a joined shape. A joined shape, it's going to be largely a silhouette, but I wanted to, uh, to give that sort of um, imposing presence that they have. The skyline of Boston is a combination of new and old. Uh, we see the Customs Tower to the left, and we see the Harbor Towers to the right, uh, the Rose Wharf is relatively new, and the area has that wonderful mix of nostalgia and modern architecture. <clears throat> Along the waterfront, we, we found a nice place to, to work, actually, which is an open-air restaurant, and uh, they were quite, quite happy to, after serving us dinner, to let us sit for a while and do some painting and uh, this made it easier because about halfway through it started to rain and if we were exposed to the elements it would have been a night of misery however our group of four was able to persevere and in um, and avoid some very challenging circumstances what you see me doing now is, is working with um, a single, well, a single tone, but it's made of th three colors. There's ultramarine blue, some alizarin crimson, and some neutral tint that I'm mixing. I'm choosing to go light in the upper part, and then as I work down, get a little darker. But I'm very much thinking about um, individual brush strokes and how I can use brushwork to uh, exaggerate the feeling of uh, this big skyline of Boston. How can I exaggerate the feeling, the intensity of the lights as they start to present themselves both in the buildings and on the water. And so as I go along I'm very conscious of the angle of the stroke and how it works to present the perspective, how it works to uh, illustrate um, the windows that are very different uh, from building to building and how the brushwork works to capture the archway and then finally some of the dancing lights that are on the water. And as I said, <clears throat> one of the techniques that I'm using uh, profusely through this um, painting is dry brush. And dry brush is recognizable when you see um, the paper sort of shining through in a rough fashion. The rough pa paper helps me a lot in presenting brush strokes in this manner. Uh, that and before I tack the paper with the brush, I make sure I take out a lot of the moisture so that the brush is, is literally kind of skidding along and uh, the result in this case is a sort of shimmering or almost exploding light coming out of Rose Wharf and coming out of the adjacent buildings. 
So this is what I'm trying to capture. And as I said before, I'm trying to, this is a, I don't know how many different buildings in front of us. There's at least seven or eight, and, but they're gonna read sort of as one big structure. Um, here and there, you'll be able to feel different depths and different um, sort of levels in the buildings. But the tone that I'm cho choosing and the, the color mixtures are helping to keep them rather kind of monolithic and rather um, sort of one body, one, one big shape. And this helps visually in the visual language to create drama, to bring focus, a little more focus to the night sky, which is passing behind. Certainly to, <clears throat> it helps to focus on the lights. If we got um, conscious and uh, started to work detail into each building, try to work each building and uh, worse yet each window or each each part of the building not only would it take us uh, until dawn of the next day but uh, we would lose the the integrity of the painting i feel that we would lose the the strength of the light uh, <clears throat> the uniformity of the buildings which helped to preserve that light so in almost every painting sacrifices are made. We, we give up some of the detail to get a stronger overall impression. And um, it's a real challenge because we love it. We love the detail. The detail is beautiful. We love the, our eye can rest on any corner in this uh, skyline and enjoy it and pick up enough detail for a whole painting. Uh, we're visual creatures, so there's no doubt that this holds um, intrigue and interest to us. As painters, though, we're, we're presenting one idea. One idea means we refine um, or lose or soften a lot of these details for the sake of the picture, for the sake of the idea. And this is why it's a good, a good working habit to, before you start, to make sure you know in your, in your mind, you don't have to explain it to anybody, but in your mind you should know what it is you want to say. Um, almost all of these videos that I'm creating, I try to state that to the audience before I embark. When I'm in class, I try to make sure that I communicate that to the class that this is what I want to do. And oftentimes I've given it, you know, thought before I start. So I know where I'm going to go with the painting. But when I'm in the field and doing something new, um, I try to take a moment, a time out before getting started. Even if I feel rushed, I try to take a time out and think to myself what it is that I want to say in this painting. In this case, it's the light on the water. And uh, of course, uh, all these things intrigue me, but I really want, I'm going to go for the light on the water. And the sorts of brushwork that I use, the sorts of colors that I use, the scale that I give, the um, tonal values that I use, I like to believe that those are all aligning with my idea. And it's a lot of things you know, that we have to think about as painters um, as we're going along. And certainly technique is one of them. But these two thought processes of deciding um, what you'd like to say and then employing the technique to say that, they're, they're different. Two separate things. And ideally they come out, they work together. Um, but they don't always. So anyway, uh, you've watched me now uh, labor over this building and the lights are starting to present themselves. Uh, the back buildings are a little weak, so I'm adding uh, one more wash to, to kind of unify the back part, the back building. And I've left a lot of white paper in this one. White paper is crucial in, I feel, in giving that sparkle, that uh, strong sense of light and this is the 
so far finished piece. I can see a lot of mistakes, a lot of things I wish I'd done differently, no doubt. But I'm happy with the overall feeling. And if I'm happy with the overall feeling, I feel it's good enough uh, for the moment. If I learn something later on that I can add to this, I may revisit this scene, try it again. But for now, I feel I've captured the, the light on the water.